Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to download and install the Tor browser. So let's get started. All right, so I'm back again with another Tor browser installer video. I've done quite a few of these over the years, and they have been pretty successful. A lot of people ask me to give updated tutorials, and so here we are. It's June 15th, 2023, and this is the latest information that you need. Now, if you're not aware, Tor browser is a privacy-based browser. It blocks trackers. It defends against surveillance resists fingerprinting, and has multi-layered encryption. Allows you to browse the internet without being watched and surveilled, right? So it's a pretty cool browser. So if you're interested in internet privacy, this is the browser for you. Now, it's not like a normal browser in a lot of ways. This is not the browser that you want to be checking your email in or paying your bills in. This is a specialized browser that you will use when you want to privately browse the internet free from surveillance. So the first thing I'll say about privacy and anonymity on the internet is that if you're using the Windows operating system, you are already at a disadvantage. A lot of people point out that if you're really interested in privacy and security, you should be using a version of Linux or Unix like Debian or Ubuntu. I know this is great, but most of you out there I'd say 90% plus of you are using a Windows computer, so I'm gonna show you how to do this on Windows so that you'll have a reasonable amount of privacy and security. So downloading the Tor browser is not that difficult. We just click here. So we click download, uh, drop it into our downloads folder. So here we go, it's an installer just like anything else you've ever downloaded from the internet. You can just double click that and off you go. Unfortunately, it's not quite that simple if you're really interested in privacy and security. You wanna make sure that you've got a valid copy of the Tor browser installer. There are a lot of bad actors out there that would like to fool you into downloading a malware version of Tor or a faux version of Tor that looks real, but actually does target you for surveillance. So we wanna make sure that we've got a good copy of Tor, the version of Tor that the developers intended for you to download and install. So there are some tools for verifying this, and I'm gonna go through this. I'll try not to take you too far down the rabbit hole, and you're welcome to skip all this verification stuff, but I feel it's very important. So if if we hit the back button on our browser and go back to this page, you'll notice that there's this thing called the signature. Now we can go ahead and download that. Just click that and download it. Drop it right next to the installer that you just downloaded. Notice that the extension is ASC. Now this is a specialized file that will help you cryptographically verify that you have the correct version of Tor that the developers intended for you to download. Now, there's also another little component that you're going to need, and they don't make it abundantly clear how you grab this thing, so you're gonna have to do a little digging, but I'll help you get through it because I've done the digging for you. So what you wanna do is highlight this little question mark, and then they're gonna take you over to this page where they will direct you to all of the procedures of verifying your download. I'll put a link to this page down in the description below so that you can find out more if you're interested and uh, be a little more meticulous in this, but I am going to give you a quick overview of how this works. You're gonna need some tools here. So one of the tools that you'll really wanna have on your computer is a SHA SUM checker. And this is one of my favorite ones. This is uh, Raymond Lim's SHA SUM checker, MD5 and SHA checksum utility. Uh, I'll put a link to this down in the description. You can uh, purchase his pro version for 10 bucks, or you can uh, download the free version over on uh, download.com. 
There are also some ways you can do this with some online tools without downloading a standalone SHA sum checker, but I recommend Raymond Linz. I've been using it for years and uh, it's well worth the money to go ahead and grab his pro version if you'd like. Also, you're going to need GPG for Windows. This is a cryptographic verification tool that you can download and install on your computer for doing the full cryptographic verification over on Tor, which we'll get to shortly. All right, so let's go ahead and download that. Uh, you can choose to donate or not, it's up to you. Now they're gonna give you some instructions on checking the integrity of your GPG4 installer. I know this is uh, kind of recursive, it never seems to end. You'll wanna verify this download as well to the best of your ability. And uh, what I found is, uh, go ahead and just run the SHA sum check on this. There are uh, ways to do the cryptographic verification on this download, but if you don't have any tools as of yet, uh, you'll have to settle for a SHA sum check. But there are more complicated ways of doing this. Uh, I'll give you some, I'll give you a link to this page as well. <laughs> so here is this long number. This is the number that the developers generated when they ran a checksum on their installer file. So basically what you want to do is run a checksum on the one that you downloaded and find out if it matches. So we'll go ahead and use Ray. We browse over to the installer that we just downloaded. All right, the GPG for Windows. We open it up, it's gonna generate uh, SHA sums. Now we can just take this one that we downloaded, copy it into our clipboard and paste it in here and run the verify and it'll tell us that the hash matched. This means that we verified the integrity of the file that we just downloaded. As I mentioned, there are more intense ways of doing this so that you can be completely secure that you've downloaded the proper verification software. But I won't go too far into that. Most of you may not have an earlier version of Cleopatra, so you would just stop with the SHA sum check. Now that I've done that, I'll go ahead and install my GPG for Windows, my latest version. We'll hit next here. Go ahead and install all of these. Now that I've updated my Cleopatra to the latest version, uh, I'm ready to go. But if you've never done this before, if this is the first time you've downloaded uh, GPG for Windows and the first time you've launched Cleopatra, it'll probably pop this window up asking you to create your own key for uh, certification. Basically, you put in your name. Uh, you don't have to put in your real name if you don't want to. You don't have to put in an email address if you don't want to and then you've created your own certificate. And this will be the one that you use to certify any others that you download. All right, now that we've got uh, Cleopatra running, we want to download the Tor developer browser keys into our list of certificates, right? That way we'll be able to run the verification. So we'll go back over here to the Tor page. We've already installed GNUPG for our platform. Right, they give us a link to the GPG for Windows. We wanna get this uh, key. All right, so in the past, what I've done is uh, just searched for this key uh, from within Cleopatra. This finds an older key, which has a little bit of a version problem. So I'll save you that grief <laughs> by uh, what you wanna do is go down here to the bottom where there's a workaround and you can just click on this link and download the fingerprint this way. So if we click on this, uh, we'll drop this into our downloads folder, right? And we're just basically downloading the key directly from their uh, keys open PGP site. You can also paste that in there if you want and you'll find the latest key, all right? Basically the same thing, all right? But you wanna make sure you do it this way or the verification is gonna fail. All right, so now that we've got that key downloaded to our uh, downloads folder, let's just go ahead and uh, import it. And we'll just click on it here, open it up. We'll go ahead and import that uh, developer signing key. You will need to certify this key. I've already done it uh, and I can't revoke it. <laughs> right, so if it says uncertified, you'll need to go ahead and certify it on your own. Okay. All right, now that you've got the proper key 
in your list of certificates and it's certified, you're ready to roll now. We want to confirm that we've got the Tor Browser installer downloaded along with that ASC file that's right next to it in the same folder. All right, we'll use our Cleopatra to use decrypt verify. Click on the Tor Browser installer. Like I said, make sure that ASC file is right next to it. Click open. And you should get this nice green window here that tells you that uh, that is a valid signature and that you have downloaded the proper version of the Tor installer file. Right. All right. Now that we've outsmarted all of the bad actors and government agencies and verified our Tor installer, we can go ahead and run it. Yay. Finally. <laughs> all right. Now we'll go ahead and double click the installer and install the Tor browser on our computer. So uh, we'll click OK. All right, now the default installation is on your desktop. I'm not a huge fan of having files and folders on my desktop. So what you can do is just delete all this information, all this entire path, and just leave it uh, C Tor browser, right? Make sure you leave that little slash in there. Choose Install. And it's just going to create the folder on your C drive and install. Go ahead and run it. All right, now you can connect directly if you want to, uh, but you might want to be a little more secure uh, by choosing this configure connection and choosing a bridge. Depending on where you are in the world, uh, your connection to Tor might be blocked, so you might need to use a bridge. Keep in mind that you want to make sure that you follow all the laws of your local jurisdictions. But I like to use a bridge to add that another level of security to mine. So we can select a built-in bridge. I like to use this bridge, but there are you can choose one of the other ones if you want to. Click OK. You've got some bridges built in there. But you can uh, make this happen automatically by just ticking that off. So that once you've done this uh, initial configuration, you won't need to worry about it anymore. We'll go ahead and choose Connect. It might take a couple of minutes uh, for it to connect. And here you go. You've got your default Tor browser. And uh, the default search engine is DuckDuckGo. Now you have a safe and secure browser for browsing the internet free from surveillance and tracking. Um, as I mentioned, uh, it's probably not a good idea to do your day-to-day -day normal e checking your email and paying your online bills from this browser, right? This browser is just designed for searching and reading articles mostly, that kind of stuff. So use it with care and caution. Now, one of the things that people use the Tor browser for is connecting to the deep web or the dark web. Uh, so there's uh, a few tricks that you might want to use to connect to those types of sites. I'll give you a, a little bit of insight as to how those work. Uh, let's choose a, a site, a normal site, for instance. Let's just search for the latest news. All right, and it might give you a, a site like this. Now you'll notice that the uh, website here ends with a .com. This is a mainstream type website and you can use the Tor browser to visit normal websites like uh, a .com website if you want to check the latest news. Notice that the site loads a lot uh, slower than normal and a lot of the elements aren't going to load properly because Tor blocks a lot of tracking and ads. You may or may not want to browse uh, mainstream websites using the Tor browser. But when you do this, your only your encryption is not end to end in both ways. You're browsing this site a lot more uh, with a lot more privacy than normal. But if you really want full privacy and encryption, then you want to use a you want to browse on a site that ends in dot onion. Right. So how do we find those kind of sites? Well, uh, let's back up a little bit. And uh, this time, instead of searching for latest news, let's search for hidden wiki. All right. And there are several hidden wiki sites. Right. Uh, this is just one of them. Uh, but it does direct us to links that end in dot onion. Right. This is what we want. So uh, we can choose this 
site, which is another hidden wiki. And notice that it has the .onion extension at the end, not .com. So we can click this link. All right, now we're on a full-blown, uh, safe and secure Tor site because we're using the .onion extension. This way, the it's encrypted from both directions, right? The site itself is encrypted and your browser is encrypted. Now, I'm not going to cast judgment good or bad on any of these links here. I'm just showing you that you really want to use .onion type websites when you're using the Tor browser if you really want to take advantage of its full functionality. And uh, I'll leave it at that. So as I mentioned, this is how you download and install the Tor browser and get connected to Onion sites. If you wanted to skip all of that verification that I went through, that's up to you. But it's in your best interest to use those verification tools that I showed you in the beginning of the video to make sure that you have a good and valid copy of the Tor browser before you start using it. If you have any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.